So there's Kajelcha on the outside. World Silver in the 10,000 metres in Doha, fourth in the London World Championships. He set a world indoor record for the mile at 347, world ranked number three. Outside him, Gebruet, Rio bronze medalist at 5,000 metres. The, the seeded runners are the first ones that we're seeing here. So Salomon Borrega, also a world 5,000 metre silver medalist. A surprise, perhaps, to see him running at uh, 10,000 in the trials. Tamarit Tola, the Olympic bronze medalist, fifth in the candidates race for this event. These are just the first five that we're seeing here. What an amazing lineup. There's Richard Dalmer of Netherlands, who will be uh, around. Tume is an athlete uh, that you may not have heard of, but he's world ranked number 25. So they are the top deck runners on the outer deck of this double decker start. This should be a classic. The men's 10,000 metres trials for Tokyo. Yeah, they've gone for the wrong curve. Stand up, gentlemen. It's the nice big sweeping curve, not the dotted one, fellow. Look, see where he's sweeping? Follow the track, Jeff. No, stand back now. Stand back now. You've blown it once. Wait for the starter. Wait, get back off the line, mate. Get back off the line. Foot back. Get off the line. Get off. That's it. They'll be showing cards to them in a minute. They're eager to get away. It just needs to be on the right line. It's quite a sharp curve because it needs to take them inside the cones of the outside deck. So they'll all run exactly 10,000 metres, but uh, well done, Marksman. Good work. This time, yeah, yeah, that's the line. That's the line. Now get your toes behind it. Away we go. That doesn't count as a false start, I don't think. That was a technicality because uh, double-decker starts aren't the norm for most meetings around the circuit. So Richard Dalmer, you can see him on the outside there, the tall Dutchman in the black kit. He will be looking to latch onto the wave lights for the Olympic standard. So you can see he's not looking to get in front. He's just looking to slot in with the green lights for those from all nationalities who are looking for 27-28. So we've seen ferocious speed in the uh, previous races. This is uh, 27 minutes of running, so it starts off a little bit more sedately compared to what we have been seeing. But nonetheless, you can expect the uh, world ranking list, the world top 10, to take a bit of a battering off the back of this race. These are beautiful conditions in Hengelo. So that Olympic qualifying mark is 27.28. I wonder, uh, some of those kickers, will they just try and hang? There was no need. Uh, if, if you've got the fastest finish in the race, you just need to stay in touch. The white lights are the Olympic qualifying mark. That's where Dalma has uh, latched on. So I'm surprised nobody is uh, surging away from him, but it is early days yet. This is a familiar hunting ground for athletes like Hagos Gebruet. His personal best of 26.48 was set here. This is surprising. Uh, no takers for Dalma. bit cagey this one i wonder if they got a bit uh, flummoxed by that uh, falsy start but we've seen every race go off in full cry except this one plenty of time for that to be made up but it's uh, slightly unusual i think it surprised dalma as well So this is one kilometre as they come through the 200 metre point here, 245 or thereabouts. Yeah, and they're being pointed, go with the pacemaker, he knows what he's doing. So Dalma is very familiar with this track and, and this setup of wave light technology. It's a, a Dutch concept largely, Bram Salman 
Joss Hermans have created it, marketed it, and uh, made it popular in athletics. It's great for spectators. I'm not always sure if you're in a big group when your eye line is at shoulder level, whether you can actually spot those lights down at curb level. It's not where you're looking. It's the, it's, it's brilliant for spectators to check uh, the pace at which races are being run visually. And it's good for pacemakers when they're out on their own. But if you're in a group, you're not looking down at foot level. Well, suddenly this has opened up. You can see Down has gone back to a seventh or eighth place. We're on 27-11 pace now with Tola. Tamarit Tola, the Olympic bronze medalist at 10,000 metres. He's got a best of 26.57. He was still medalist in the uh, World Championship Marathon in London 2017. So a whole range of distances and he will favour play into his strength by making it a long run for home. Bellyhoo, world rank number sixth, now taking up the running. He's run 26.53. He started his campaign for Olympic selection back in the candidates race that uh, midwinter in northern terms, January race in Addis Ababa. He was second in that. And his surge has brought it back round to 26.56 pace. So you can see, gauge it on Richard Dalmer, who's still running even pace, but much further back now. It's been uh, quite an erratic series of laps. And a gap being opened up at the front. Fifth in the World Championships in 2019. He will want to be going to another global championship. Will hip 20, Adam lack -Bellehu. The last three laps have been 65, 64, 63. So you can see the damage that that's done. Everybody likes to run long distances at an even pace. That's the most efficient way of running and the most economical. Um, that hasn't been the case these last three laps. So although he's got hip 20, that's Salomon Borrega. Rio bronze medalist at 5,000 metres. Relatively untried at uh, 10,000 metres, certainly against this level of opposition. But he's put in a few testers. Mateku is the athlete in second place. He's the uh, Kenyan. I think he ran in the Antrim half marathon back in uh, the autumn in Great Britain. So, again, coming down to 10,000 metres on the track from a completely different starting point to his winter. That was a 60-second lap. That, that's going to be hurting some of these guys. Now back down to, it was a 60 followed by a 63, just to bring it up to date. So we've had 65, 64, 63, 60, 63. Barrega got a lot less experience at this distance compared to those around him. And again, you know, question marks around why would uh, one of the best 5,000 metre runners in the world be running 10,000 metres at the trial? Is it because he wants to race this distance at the Olympics? Is he just trying to get uh, more strings to his bow? Kajelch of a tall figure behind him equally has moved up to 10, but has got the world indoor record at the mile. So we've got in the first four runners, we've got a half marathoner and a world mile record holder. We're around 26.38 pace with uh, 18 laps to go. That slipped to a 65. You can see why, because Borrega moved to one side and just uh, invited somebody else to take a turn at the wheel. I mean, this, uh, what a world-class group 
but what a bold run for home being made here by the Kenyan. Of course, he they will know he's Kenyan, so he forms no part of the Ethiopian selection process, but there is a rivalry there that they'll want to uh, tap into. But he's, I, I think this has gone back to about 60 seconds for this lap. He's part of the race as well. I mean, he, he may be trying to qualify for Kenya, but uh, he went off the same starting gun. Perhaps it was that 65 second lap which prompted him into action. He's got that very high, loose arm action. Kajelcha taking up the running, recognizing that this is a serious attack from the Kenyan. Huge stride, really tall man. Part of that Oregon project group, as uh, Sifan Hassan was. So Mateko of Kenya, then a whole host of Ethiopians. We're still only nine minutes in to a 26-minute race. We're on 26.34 pace for the leader. This is the biggest field of the day. With I think it's 23 reduced down to 22. So the start list numbers that I have have been uh, whittled down by one, and that's why the hip numbers were different than the ones I've got on my sheet in front of me. This is a big gap. This is going to be interesting, isn't it, over the... Uh, second half of the race because I think he's gambling here he's right on the green lights well look at that that's, a, that's extending that gap maybe now up to about 30 metres the green and blue lights I think uh, Kajelcha has perhaps decided not to chase and to tuck back in with the chasing group. It was a 62-second lap. Borrega now deciding that perhaps he should uh, have a go at closing the gap to the leader. There's Richard Dalmer ahead of the white lights. So all of those athletes just immediately behind him are inside uh, Olympic qualifying schedule. One or two finding it a bit uh, hot going and stepping off. Very languid, uh, relaxed action, isn't it? Let's see. It was 40 metres. It's opening up slightly, but that's a big group that have got him in their sights. You can see he's right on the green wave lights. 62 was the last full lap we had. He's on 26.31 pace. But this young man's main claim to fame was the uh, half marathon he ran in the autumn. There's seven in that group behind him. 64 second lap. So he is slowing down slightly. That gap isn't increasing. It's just maintaining. And we've still got more than half of the race to go. So this could be hare and tortoise stuff now. The hunter and the hunted. Although he looks comfortable, the stopwatch says otherwise. And he is just uh, starting to roll the shoulders a little bit. 11 laps gone, 14 laps to go. The last athletes of the day will be in the warm-up area prior to going into the call room. That's the women's 10,000 metres. Still on 26.34 pace for the leader. More than half the field inside Olympic qualifying time, and a few of them do need it. That's 27.28. You can see he's drifting behind the green and blue lights now, so he is toiling a bit. Borrega now up on his toes. 5,000 metres still and he's running quicker than he did at the FBK Games in uh, 2019 now let's see how that gap is looking I think he's uh, maybe on borrowed time there. Clears his nostrils. Oh, he's been caught. Look at that. They're just reeling him in like a fish on a fishing rod. Wow, that gap was huge. I think his, uh, his time at the front 
is sadly over. It was a bold move. We see it in cycling, don't we? We don't see it quite as often in uh, long track races where somebody takes a lead like that and then gets neutralised so quickly by a peloton that's got some of the greatest runners in the world. Worku's in there. Borrega's in there. Kajelcha's in there. Mateko is still in there in the white singlet, the Kenyan. But he must realise that uh, they have just hunted him down there. Well, having uh, having got behind him, they're now using him as a pacemaker. But that's uh, if he's if he's struggling. Yeah, Borrego's identified that. I think that will be a slower lap. They've drifted out to twenty six thirty nine pace. That's not exactly dawdling, is it? That will be fastest time in the world and one of the fastest times. Uh, big is the top. Um, Borrego and Kajelcha. I think the Kenyan unless he can gather himself, will find himself drifting back through that pack over the next two or three laps. It's a long way to go in front for Borrega. He'll be very conscious of the uh, closing speed that Kajelcha holds. He'll also be conscious that he needs to break up that chasing group, otherwise he won't be going to the Olympics, qualifying time or not. He needs to really be top two. Borrega, Kajelcha, Mateik, Worku, Berihu, Aragawi and uh, Hagos Gebrewat in the orange at the back there are that leading group. That was a 66. 66 seconds for that last lap. So it's getting a little bit cagey again. Very erratic. If you, if you looked at the uh, lap times on a tracer, it would be like a mountain range. The, the fluctuation has been anything up to four seconds, five seconds. So there's some real experience in that group, experience of championships, experience of running quick times, experience of Hengelo and experience of Olympic Games and getting on the podium at Olympic Games. Borrega doing a lot of looking around. I think he's a reluctant leader. The pacing is mostly being done by Richard Dalma, much further back where the white lights are for the Olympic qualifying. In fact, he's probably gone now because he was only going to halfway. Two laps, the last two laps have been in 66 seconds, so it's uh, notably steadied up. Twenty-six forty-seven is the projected uh, finishing time. We've got that group of six. The Kenyan Daniel Mateko has rallied. Gebrewet is lurking at the back there. He's a wily old competitor. Seems to remember a race that he was in one time where there was a miscount of the number of laps. And, and uh, Kajelcha was in the incident where as he fell, he grabbed at somebody else's shorts. They've uh, all had what happened next moments in the sport, but they're all very, very accomplished competitors. And they all close quickly as well. Tedesi Worku is under 20, the leader, junior athlete. So I'm sure he's punching his ticket for World Juniors in Kenya in August. But, uh, well, unless this is a, a last-ditch attempt for him before he drifts off the pace. It was 69 seconds, so it slowed down quite a lot that's enabled the uh, junior athlete to do that, Tedesi Worku. And he's moving to one side, suggesting he's not completely comfortable few gestures, a bit of Amharic. So as we look at that group, world class though they are, half of them will not be going to the Olympic Games or up to half of them will not be going to the Olympic Games and up to three will. Don't forget we've got two nationalities with the uh, Kenyan Mateko in the white singlet. That was a 67-second lap, so it's uh, revived again. Borrega seems to be the man controlling this. If he decides he wants it a bit quicker, that's what happens. And the net effect is that somebody goes out the back door each time. It's very uneconomical, but he's a man full of confidence. Wow, look at this. Look at this. 18 minutes into the race. 
don't think any of us were expecting that. It's almost like an impatience, isn't it? I've had enough of these 69, 67 second laps. Hold my beer, here I go. But they can still see him. They're running evenly behind him. And there is still... Yeah, it's, it seems to have disposed of uh, Mateko at the back of the group. But Kajelcha is right there again. And he closed that economically with that huge stride. 62 second lap and we're on 26.54 as a projection. And the athletes going to the Olympic Games are in that picture, but who? Arigawi, third in the World Juniors. Hagos Gebrewet in the orange. It looks like it's slowed again. It's, has anybody heard of Fartlek, where you do one lap fast, one lap slow? That's what we're seeing here. It's enabled the Kenyan, Mateko. <laughs> Why not take the lead again, mate? Be my guest. Away he goes. It's actually Hagos Gebrewet who takes the lead with... Uh, these are astonishingly varied laps that they're putting in. It's not giving anybody else a chance to close because they're a long way behind the second group. Don't forget they're operating at 27, 28 pace for uh, Olympic qualifying. I wonder if Borrega has damaged himself a little bit this time because he's conspicuously off the pace this time, fifth out of sixth in that group. So that impetuous surge, I hope it hasn't cost him a place on the road to Tokyo. He's a class athlete. I'm sure he can get back on this, but it's not looking brilliant for him at the moment. Worku, the junior. Tedesi Worku, the under-20, bossing it at the front with some of the greatest athletes of all time behind him. Kajelcha, Gebrewet, Borega. Those are the top three seeds, and they're in uh, third, fifth, and sixth as we look at that group. Gebrewet nearly stumbled on the curb with the wave light in it. Beyond the 20-minute point now. So only just over six minutes of running to go. Kajelcha has a look over his shoulder. He's not too worried about the ones in front. The Kenyan won't count in the selection. It's a junior up front. He's keeping his eye on Gebrewet and Borega. Where are they? What's Borega got up his sleeve next? Is it another surge? It'll be coming from a long way back if he does. Two lapped athletes appearing up ahead of them. Wow, this is this is uh, an unusual race. The man who's been putting the surges in has damaged nobody except perhaps himself at the moment. Borega, perhaps giving himself a lap to settle, a lap or two to settle. One Kenyan and those uh, that group of Ethiopians, but they can't all go to Tokyo. It's three to go. They're going to get the Olympic qualifying mark, no question. The Federation has made no commitment to selecting even winners, but you would think in a race of this calibre, this close to the games, top two would certainly be in their thinking and possibly top three. But there are five Ethiopians, so two of them definitely will not be going to Tokyo. So there's your triumph and disaster all in the one group as we approach 22 minutes. We're on pace now for 27.01, so it has slowed. We're still almost 30 seconds inside Olympic qualifying. It's still the junior, Worku, leading them round. But the others, it feels like they're using him. They're sitting on him. We saw in the women's 5,000, it came down to that last lap and a half burn up. And this has got all those hallmarks as well. Brega, I think, has come through any bad patch that he may have had. Gebrewet hasn't led for a single step of the way. He's at the back there in the orange. I don't remember seeing uh, a sprint involving Borega and Kajelcha. So, I mean, your money would go on the world mile record holder, Kajelcha, but uh, stranger things have happened. Borega isn't a slouch either, uh, nor is Gebrewet. I mean, this, this, 
if it if it now gets a bit cagey round to the closing stages, those three guys may well be the Ethiopian team. But there's three others looking to make their mark on this race and have gone way beyond anything we might previously have expected. Stephen Kisser is on target for the qualifier for Uganda. That was the big story for that. Really needs to run under the 27-22 that was run by Abdallah Mande of Uganda. So the athletes being lapped are still running decent times. We've got barely three minutes of racing left. So positions now, positioning is crucial. If somebody springs it from the front with a long run for home, you're giving yourself two or three seconds to react if you're too far back. It was a 60 second, 66 second lap. So they're now on schedule for 27.02. Still the junior leading, still a six-man game, still five Ethiopians and one Kenyan. Still only three that can be picked for Ethiopia for the Games. And this is a proud event over the years, going way back to the 1960s. Worku, Kajelcha. Berihu Aragawi was third in the World Juniors in 2018. He's the other athlete in that group. I think the team management on the infield are getting very uh, excited and agitated about this. Three laps to go. Mateko, the Kenyan, going through another bad patch at the back of that group, trying to stay in contention. Still operating right on 27-minute pace. I'm sure they'll go through that because the, the battle and the closing speed as Borrega moves out almost to lane three to come round the outside. This is the third coming of Borrega. But if he surges this time, he has to mean it. There's too little time to go. Gebrewetz in the orange, first time he's even touched the front of the race and it's the big three now getting away. Gebrewetz, Borrega and Kajelcha. There is some super sprinting in those legs. They know what they're doing here. It is two laps to go. This could be the team, but they won't want to risk that. They will want the win. Down the back straight for the final time. Borrega moving wide, poised. Kajelcha still looking over his shoulder. There's no danger there now. Kajelcha moving out wide, but Borrega has got those sprinting arms going. The lap runners need to be careful here because this could have an influence on the race, but it is Borrega. It's not decisive yet. Kajelcha is still there. The head is pecking. Gebrewet in between the pair of them. Kajelcha winding it up for the last 100 metres. Who's got this one? It is still Borrega, but Kajelcha coming round the outside. It's going right to the wire. Borrega holding, holding. Kajelcha with one last attack, but it is going to be Borrega who takes it. Kajelcha second and Gebrewet third. And I think that will be the trio for Tokyo. Watch out, world. And we're keeping an eye on the white light that is the Olympic qualifying distance. It is 27.28 we're looking for. The clock has obviously stopped on the winner's time there. These two guys need to be careful not to keep going across the line because they'll be activating the uh, sprint finish, the photo finish. The last lap was 51 seconds. 51 seconds to go under 27. So I think we've gone, I'm looking at the clock down there, I think we're on 27.43. So any other Olympic qualifiers are already through the line. Just a couple of finishes still out on the track, round to the 200 metre point. What a great race. And well done, Borrega, because he had a couple of flourishes, much as we saw in the women's 
5,000 metres where it looked like it was for real and then he dropped back and, and that uh, disrupted rhythm seems to have, seemed to have affected him for quite a number of laps and then he finally came good on the last lap. He knew what he was up against. There's some wily old campaigners and some real sprinting power, but surely the selectors will pick those three. Thank you. 